Hey guys and welcome to another Cubase Tips tutorial video. Today we're going to be having more of an in-depth look into creating a session template specifically for orchestral music and it's going to be focused around contact and using Native Instruments contact. Um, the reason being is that the sample libraries I use and own all work with inside of contact. Um, it's a very powerful engine and a lot of developers create loads of products to work inside of the contact engine and pretty much all the major um, companies that develop orchestral software use contact for their libraries. So as I've briefly touched on in the past, templates are very powerful tools. They allow you to load up a session and, and it'll have all of the things that you need there to get creating music with and you know save you a big bunch of time when it comes to setting up your patches, setting up your articulations, your expression maps, setting up your mixer, creating groups, sends, effects and all the rest of it. These are kind of mundane tasks that you have to go through every time you um, start a new song whereas if you use a template it takes all that away and you can just literally load it up and start making music. Um, but depending on what style you're going for, uh, you know, if it's a trailer sort of setup or something more f like for fantasy music, then obviously your template will vary. But you can save those variations and say, oh, okay, today I'm going to do some epic music. I'll load up my epic template and it'll, you know, there it is. You've got everything ready to go. So obviously um, we're going to be using contact, as I say. And. Um, so if I load up an instance of contact here, what people generally do, there's a couple of different methods to do in this, by the way, but what people generally do is they'll load up contact and they'll load a patch uh, and they'll start playing around and go, right, okay, I want to add some more uh, patches. Let me just minimize the uh, keyboard here. So uh, outputs, ah, outputs even. Okay, so what people tend to do is they'll open up a load of different patches inside of contacts like this. And as you can see already, contact already automatically changes the MIDI output. So there we go, let's load this last one for the strings. And then what people will do is they'll look at this and go, okay, there's five different string sections. I'm going to create four MIDI tracks. call them strings and hey presto each one of these controls each individual instance you know of uh, of the patches and then they start composing music and whatnot now this method is a handy method if um, your computer isn't the most powerful computer in the world well, when it comes to the CPU uh, because you, you're using less instances of contact although to be fair it's it's not really a CPU hog anyway it's a pretty you know minimal footprint um, engine the contact engine um, but yeah so when people create um, music like this or templates like this and you use MIDI tracks to control all the different patches the drawbacks are Mixing is one of the main ones <laughs> to go straight off the bat. Um, so if you load up the mixer, what you'll notice is that all of these different patches are actually assigned to one channel here. And if you wanted to do individual EQ or compression or whatever it is you want to do on any of these, you'd have to create the outputs for it inside of contact. And that means doing this. So you create, open your outputs and then you'd go to down here and... Uh, oh, they've changed this since the update. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> oh, that's the one. So under batch functions, you go to clear output selection, uh, blah, 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 click that, and it'll assign each of these patches to its own output. And then in Cubase, what you'd have to do is then go over to the rack, and activate those outputs okay and then in the mixer you'll finally have your individual outputs for each individual section but the names you'll have to rename them all because despite having the names here strings one two three and four you're still going to have to 
do an extra step and rename them in the mixer as well. So this method for me is a little bit annoying um, because there's a lot of steps going on and you're having to sort of double your workload technically to set your session up. So what if I remove all these, what I like to do is this. I would personally just add five instances of contact. And then load a patch on each instance. That way it automatically creates the channel for it. And when you name it, it's it's gonna, you know, it's gonna change in the mixer. Stings. <laughs> So you can see here, and it's just taking those two steps out of the way. So routing it and then renaming it, and you know you don't have to bother creating all the sends and stuff. So it's nice and easy. So we're just going to do this for this video. So this patch here is uh, strings hole multi. By the way, I'm going to be using orchestral tools Inspire for this because I've already got a lot of expression maps that I've made for this library already. So it just cuts down a little bit of time on the video for you. So. Excuse me, first of all, strings. So let's call this strings. I need to move my keyboard. There we go. We can call that strings whole ensemble. Uh, the next one we'll call uh, strings. You can even copy these values as well. Uh, Okay, and the next one will be high strings, low strings, and then and okay. So now I need to load up the patches for these individual ones here. So I'll open this up first chair. Same for this one. Uh, oh, high strings for this one. And then low strings. And then violins one and two. Now, as you can see here, these have got key switches on. Now, this is another thing that you need to take into consideration. Are you someone that uses key switches or are you the kind of person that likes composing and having each individual artic articulation loaded as a patch? I like working with key switches personally. Um, and it does take a little bit longer to set up, in all honesty, because if you're using key switches... You really want to be using expression maps um, because it's once you've got them set up, it's so much better uh, and so much more uh, user friendly than it is to use MIDI notes to control different key switches. Um, but yeah, if 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 you want to do that method, yeah, more power to you. It's going to take a little bit longer to set up, um, but the other method, which is a little bit easier, is actually just loading all the individual articulations as separate patches. Um, reason why I'm doing it as key switches on this video is because it just shows you um, how you go about making the expression maps as well so you get a better idea. So here we've got the uh, strings, so I'm going to give them a colour, call them a nice colour green. Um, now what I want to do with the mixer for my strings here is I'm going to send all these to a group, so I'm going to select them all by holding shift and clicking the first and clicking the last. Right click and then go add group to, to selected channels. And then I'm just going to call this group strings. Now what this does, it basically all the all these will be sent to one channel. So now I can I can put a reverb on this channel. And um, you know I have the wet and dry feature on the reverb I use. I like to use Valhalla Vintage Verb on um, my orchestral templates. There's loads of different reverbs out there. I mean, another good one I like using is by Waves, uh, which is the H Verb. That's another good plugin to use. But um, I kind of like the sound more for orchestral stuff with Valhalla Verb, so I tend to use that. 
So as you can see here, this, this is the main master group fader for all our strings, basically. So when we control this, it turns the volume down of all of these. But it also acts as our main group for applying any processing um, across all of the strings. So it's good for adding your reverb on, basically. So now we've created the string sections or if you've loaded all the individual patches and you've colored them all green and then sent them all to a group. Um, next thing to do would be to create the other sections of your orchestra. So let's load up another four instances of contact here. Oh, I forgot to add contact to those. Make it five instances. Anything I don't like is that all of them load up like that. I'd rather them all load minimized than them all sort of explode in my face uh, when using Cubase, but there you go. So uh, again, we're going to be going on to loading up the key switch versions of the next section of our template. Let's go for brass, so whole ensemble. Copy that brass, and then the next one will be trumpet and horns, uh, and tuba. And the last one is oh no, there's another couple. Uh, solo horn. I need to create one more, so I'll just quickly duplicate this. Solo trumpet. Okay, so let's just give these a color as well. So that first one's got the patch loaded on. Let's uh, load up this one. Muted. And you get the idea of how this works. You, you sort of, you first load all the patches up that you want in your template. And then what you do is you then, if you're using key switch patches, then what you would do is set up your expression maps for each one of these. But as I say, if you don't use expression maps and you just load up the individual articulations, it actually is a lot easier. Um, just depends on how you like to work. If you have all the individual articulations loaded, you'll find that you'll have just way more track count, so it can be a little bit confusing trying to find things. So it's a good idea to name them properly, so you can use the quick search function inside of Cubase to try and find anything in particular. So if I, for example, if I was had, if I wanted to find, I don't know, my staccato brass or something like that, if I loaded an individual uh, patch instead of a key switch patch, then if you've named it, brass and then you've added you know something else like staccato it will pop up instantly if you use the search feature so something to bear in mind right uh, so that's the brass all loaded up now what we're going to do for this Again, if you're using different libraries, it's going to look a lot different. I'm just doing it for this particular library because it makes it shorter for, the, for me to make this video and you're not going to be sitting here for hours uh, listening to me. So what we're going to do, like I did in the last one, is um, add these to their own group channel called Brats. I'll give that a colour as well. Another cool thing to do in Cubase if you get a little bit confused with the channels is if you go to your zones here, uh, when I make group tracks, what I do is I put them to a zone on the right so it splits it from the mixer. I also do it with the output as well. Uh, it keeps them separate to these on the left so you can sort of differentiate between them. And then I'm just going to copy that reverb onto there as well. Um, so it's all ready. You can choose whatever reverb sound you want. I'm just using the default one for the sake of this video and then just copying it over. So that's the brass section done. And then again, what you would do next is you'd do the woodwinds and then you would do your percussion. So let's start those off. So uh, contacts, let's load up another. I'll do one instance because I don't want it exploding in my face again. <laughs> um, so where are we? Woodwinds. Whole ensemble. And 
what I'll do, I'll just duplicate on because it makes my life easier. Load that key switch patch in, rename it. So we're flutes and flutes and clarinets. Let's duplicate that one. You'll notice my PC will do that sometimes where it sort of loads. It's just because I'm, I've got a billion different things running in the background and it's just sort of thinking between them. So the next one's bassoons and clarinets, or uh, as I like to call them, the brosoons. The brosoons and clarinets. Um, and next will be the solo flute and then the solo clarinet. So let's get that loaded up. Solo flute. I'm just going to copy that again and then load up the solo clarinet and then I'll rename them afterwards. Solo clarinet. Right, let's give these a colour. Let's give, oh, let's give them a a, a grey, grey. That's not grey. That's brown. <laughs> let's give them a brown colour. And then what we're going to do again is we're going to send these to a group, like we've done with the other two in the mixer. So right click, make a group, wood winds, and then set that to the right of the mixer with the other stuff, and we'll give that a brown colour as well. And copy the reverb over. And then finally, we want to work on the percussion. So let's uh, instrument contact five. Let's load up five instances again. Wait for it. I really dislike how it does that. They should change that. Okay, now the percussion. Now, percussion general, well, depending on the library, it might be single articulations or, you know, it's rare that you get multi articulations, key switches for percussion. Uh, percussion, so what have we got here? We've got percussion essentials. Marimba and xylophone. Uh, what else have we got here? Glockenspiel. I always have to remember how to try and spell that. It's a weird one. Uh, and timpani. Now, I know there's two different timpani patches on this particular library, so um, we're going to load those up. So timpani hits and timpani rolls. Okay, that's the percussion done. So we're just going to add a color to them so we can see the individual sections here. And then we're going to load up the mixer and do the same thing again, where we send them all to a group. And then assign that group to the right, give it the color, and copy the reverb over, just like that. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just put reverb on the master channel? Reason being is that um, it's nice to use sort of subtly different sounding reverbs on the different sections it just gives it a nicer color than just using the one reverb across the whole template uh, that's just my personal preference you can do whatever you like but you can see here already we're starting to build up this quite nice i'm just going to turn off the stereo in so it's not there Now, if you want to go one step further, let's say you've got a lot of, if you're, if you're doing the articulation method where you're not using key switches and you have a lot of 
tracks going on you you know you probably have tripled the track count that i have now for all the different patches what i'd recommend doing uh, recommend what i would recommend you do is use folder tracks uh, fo- oh my god what i would recommend you do is use folder tracks um for um organizing it a little bit more so to make a folder track just select the channels that you want to go in the folder right click on it and then go move uh, selected tracks to a new folder and then you can call this folder whatever you want it's also good to do if you're using different libraries um, so you know that oh, okay this is uh, my heaviosity percussion or this is my 8do percussion or whatever it is um, it's a good way to sort of organize them and it also has a benefit in the mixer which i will show you in a second i'm just going to do this to all of them Okay, so you can another benefit to folders that you can do this. You can quickly sort of shrink, uh, you know, sections, so you can see more what you need to at a particular time. So if you're working on the brass, you can turn all the other stuff off, so you can just see the brass and focus on that, and not get sort of like confused by having to scroll and stuff. Especially if you're doing lots of different art- single articulation patches, and also in the mixer as well, it allows you to do this where you can you can hide a big chunk of them. You can actually hide the individual folders, so you can have, um, you know, if you want to mix your strings, you can just bring the strings up. If you want to just do the brass, blah, 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 so on and so forth, which is very handy. Okay, so now that we've loaded the patches that we want to for this particular template, the next thing would be uh, is to use expression maps because we're using key switches. Like I say, before if you're not using key switches you don't have to worry about this part but if you're using key switches then it's going to be very handy for you to pay attention now i have done a more in-depth video on creating expression maps but i'm just going to quickly show you what they actually do i've already got these set up um, for this particular library so it's much easier for me to show okay so if i select uh, this here the strings and go to expression maps. I'm going to load up one of my expression maps for it. So what was it? It was the strings, whole ensemble, uh, whole ensemble. Okay, so I'm just going to assign that to there. I'm just going to load up some of these other uh, key switches I've made. So this one's the first chair violins. This one's the high strings, low strings, violins one and two. So in a nutshell, what what expression maps do? I mean, obviously watch the other video I've done on this because it's a bit it's going to be a lot more in depth, and I actually show you how to create your own expression maps. But once you've created them. Um, when you're making your templates, it just makes life much easier if you are using key switches. So if I was to um, create this MIDI track here, normally what you would do is you'd be, you'd be scoring stuff in uh, and then you'd be scrolling down to find where the key switches are while you've got the actual uh, uh, patch open in contact. You'd be going, okay, so they're down here somewhere. I need to figure out where they are. <laughs> and uh, some developers don't tend to map um, display what the key switches are which is a minor annoyance for me because it means you've got to find it yourself uh, but I've already gone through all that and created the key switches for this particular one uh, 
um, for the expression map. Um, so yeah, what expression maps basically do is they allow you to just activate the key switches using this lane here. So you can see I've got my sustains, my spiccatos, my pizzicatos and my tremolos for this particular patch. And all you do is you just draw in where you want the key switches to happen and they will happen and it will change the sound and load the different patches up instead of having to use CC data to try and you, you know activate the switches. It's a lot, a lot nicer method, a lot easier method. Um, to use once you've got it set up it just saves you a lot of frustrations and then if you want to do things like transpose it up a, a you know half a uh, tone or a whole key or something like that listen to it in a different key you can just move the midi and you don't have to worry about moving the key switches so win-win okay so once you've got um your expression map set up for your patches. I mean, I'm, for this particular library, I'm going to make this a free download, these expression maps for you guys. I'll put a link um, in the video description so you can download them for free um, and use them if you have orchestral tools in Spire. But as you can see here, um, yeah, we've got the basics set up. Now, the, yours is going to be slightly different because depending on what libraries you use, what patches you use, and all the rest of it, your template will probably be a lot bigger than this. I know my personal template is pretty massive because I've got a lot of stuff loaded up. But this is just generally how it looks when you organize things and you create your templates. Um, the next stage, once you've got everything the way you want it to, is actually just go to File and Save Template As, and then just give it a name. So then, when you um, when you want to start a new session with this particular template and load it up instantly, you can just create a session from template and select that one that you've you know you've just saved. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to go one step further with this. So we've got the mixer here. Let's just turn off some of the stuff we're not really going to need to use the routing equalizer channel strips. Not really going to use those. What I'm going to do is go one step further. Now, if you know me, you know I like to make track icons for things and um, I have quite a lot of track icons available on my website that you can buy um, for this kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go one step further now and I'm, I'm going to use my whoa, use the track icons to sort of different, break this up a little bit more and make it a little bit easier for us when we're in the mixer. So... So I've got it on my other screen here. I'm just trying to find the right thing. So percussion. So we've got the percussion in essentials, which is pretty much all the percussion. So I'm going to use that icon on there. I'll bring them over here so you can see. Uh, what's happening. Marimba and xylophone. Is uh, I'm going to use this one. Use the Glock. And then for the timpani, I'll just use this. I've got a hit and rolls icon dedicated to this. In fact, I'll use the ones I want. Uh, I made for them. Uh, so here we go, hit roll. Let's go to strings. What do we have? Whole ensemble. All strings, so let's put that icon there. First chair, uh, there it is. Let's stick the first chair in there. And second chair, oh, high strings, there is a high strings one, let's stick that there. Low strings, let's stick that in there. Uh, violins one and two, that's the right one, stick that there. Okay, next is the brass. So we have all brass, which I chucked that on there for. Next one is muted ensemble. I can just use the same icon again. Trumpets and horns. Stick that there. Uh, trombones and tubers. Solo horn. Solo trumpet, that's a piccolo trumpet, and uh, solo trumpet. 
right let's put some icons on the woodwinds here so whole ensemble uh, flutes and clarinets bassoons and clarinets where are you there it is solo flutes and solo clarinet so the good thing about using icons like this guys is that what it will do is when you open up your mixer if you've got a lot of different articulations going on that's where all the named icons come in handy but when you've got a lot going on in your mixer if you open it up you'll notice straight away your eyes are drawn to the pictures and not actually the bottom where the labels are and another thing is as well depending on how long your name tags are they get chopped off in the mixer um, which is a shame so this just gives you a better re visual representation of each patch so you can go oh okay no that's uh, the master ensemble percussion remember xylophone xylophone oh, glockenspiel even um, and then you've got your timpani hits and stuff and then you know which of the violins are which, if it's the lows or highs or the first or second chairs, you know what brass, you know, it just, it makes it a lot easier, it gives you a better visual representation of what you're doing, even when you've got it sort of zoomed out a little bit more like this. Just gives you something to go off, which is nice. So there we go, guys. It's a uh, bit more of an in-depth look into creating a template. I'd recommend watching the video on expression maps because it's it's one of those things that it's really handy to know if you especially if you work with key switches so just watch it and create your own key switches as as i've said i'll upload the ones that i've made for this particular library and i'll let you guys download them for free so you can use them in your sessions um as always guys thank you for watching i hope you found this useful and um, creating your templates and i'll see you guys in the next video